Paul says, I pray for you in every prayer. But here's the key. This is the key word that I want you to catch. If you don't get anything tonight, get this. He had joy when it came to praying for them. It's a joy. It's not a burden. Paul's like, I didn't have to do this. I prayed with joy. Imagine getting to a place where you don't feel like, oh, I have to pray for my cousin or my aunt or my uncle or these wretched people, but going, no, no, no. It's a joy to pray for my cousin. It's a joy to pray for my wife. It's a joy to pray for my pastor. It's a joy to pray for this community. Like, I'm excited about it. And God says, I answer those type of prayers. I'm, I'm not talking about these, oh God, if I have to, and once every three years, I'm going, no Lord, give me joy to pray for these people. The reason we don't pray is because we don't think God really answers prayers. For you, prayer is like spinning a roulette wheel and if prayer is like spinning a roulette wheel, you're never going to pray. Friend, prayer is not random. Type that in the chat. It's not random where you spin a wheel and go, well, if it lands on black or lands on red, God's going to answer. This isn't some random thing where you're just shooting, you know, you're just shooting rapid fire up into the air, hoping that one of the prayers hits God. One of the prayers, like throwing darts with the blinders on, hoping that one dart sticks. Oh, you know, we have 500 darts. Maybe one of them will land, even though I have no target, even though I have no direction, even though I'm doing it blind. Prayer is not random. Corey Ten Boom said this. Prayer is powerful. The devil smiles when we make plans. He laughs when we get too busy, but the devil trembles when we pray, especially when we pray together. Remember though, that it is God who answers and he always answers in a way that he knows is best for everybody. Prayer works. It's not random. It's not roulette. Going to a prayer meeting is not the same as going to a casino. You don't just walk in like, oh, let me just pull the slots a little bit, which by the way, you should not be going to casinos, okay? Let me make that clear. I'm just gonna pull the slot and hopefully the sevens line up and God blesses me with the jackpot. Like we think hitting the jackpot, like God answered a prayer, hit the jackpot. No, why are you shocked when your prayers answered? I pray for things, friend. And then I'm shocked when God does them. Type one if you've ever done that. And you know what my shock tells me? My unbelief, that's what it does. When I'm shocked that God answers prayer and go, oh, I can't believe God answered that. That's, that's my unbelief. Why? Because when I was praying, if I, if I truly believed that God was going to answer and I was praying with a, with a focused, targeted prayer, which Paul does, and we'll show you this, then I wouldn't be shocked when God answers prayer. I, I, I want to be shocked in a good way, but I don't want to be shocked going like, wow, I can't believe that that actually worked. And I think that's what we think. When we pray for the sick, we're like, it works. I didn't, I didn't even know. No, we pray with authority. We pray with the power of the Holy Spirit. The cessation to say, well, God's spirit doesn't work through us. God's sovereign and does it himself. What are you talking about? Acts 1.8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You get power. You got the spirit of God living in you. What do you mean God doesn't work through me? It's his sovereign will. If he wills to do it, he wills to do it through you. What, man, what is this? God doesn't work through us, brother. It's just random. We just pray and believe. We pray and believe and we speak with authority. Why? Because the same spirit that wrought cross Christ from the grave when he died on that cross is now living on the inside of me. Not at, not at some church. You think God's living in a building, friend? You gotta get out of the Old Testament. God says, I'm living on the inside of you. I could go an hour on just this. I'm living in you. You are the address of the Holy Spirit. So don't, don't live this weak grasshopper religious life. Like if you're just visit giving God weekend visits on Sunday, you're living a weak, low level Christian life. You're, you're literally settling for like the lowest level. I'm just going to go, God, on Sunday, throw up a couple prayers, see what happens, put a couple, you know, coins in the machine, put a couple chips on the board and see what God does. It's this randomness. There's no randomness in prayer. We pray without ceasing. We pray with boldness. We pray with faith. We pray and we're not double-minded. This is what separates us from the pagan. We pray to a God that hears. So pray with joy. If you don't get anything, get that. That's it. That's what I needed. We can end the stream there. I'm going to pray with joy. Praying with joy reveals our faith in God. Praying with joy shows us that we're confident God's going to respond. Because if you pray with joy, you're anticipating a response. If you pray discouraged, oh God, I don't know, then you, you're not expecting God to do anything. What if, oh, this is life changing. This is life changing. What if my prayers aren't being answered because I'm not praying with joy? What if all I had to change was praying with joy 
and then all of a sudden people get healed around me all of a sudden my marriage is restored all of a sudden family and all and it clicks I was praying wrong you know the Bible says you can pray wrong and God won't hear your prayer I have a whole video on in the channel about that you can pray amiss but I'm gonna try just seven day challenge pray with joy if you're not praying you need to start praying pray with joy it shows that we're confident in God I'm asking God to help me with this I want, I want to pray with joy. How many of you in the chat have a family member that you want to get saved? Type one in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and be the first one to do it. As I'm preaching, I'm typing in the chat. Yes. I want a family member saved. And then ask yourself, how much time do you spend praying for them? We don't. We don't pray for our friends or family, yet we want them saved. We're living in delusion, friend. If we want our friends and family saved, but we're not praying with joy and we're not praying for them, we're living in delusion. We need to actually, this is, a deep, this is deep tonight. You're going to need some scuba gear for this revelation. We need to actually pray. We can't expect God to move and do what he wants to do if we're not praying. This is a principle. I'm, tr I'm trying to teach you the algorithm of the kingdom of God. This is not a YouTube algorithm. This is the algorithm of the kingdom. And the algorithm of the kingdom is you need to pray to see results. God wants you to pray. I feel convicted tonight. Let me know if you feel convicted. So Paul says, tell them you're praying for them. Paul told them, guess what? I'm praying for you. So tell your friends and family, but only tell them if you're actually praying. Because if you say, I'm praying for you and you're not, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. So don't sin. Don't sin by telling somebody you're praying for them and they're not. Just don't tell them. Just don't tell them. If you're, if you're not praying for them, don't say, I'm praying for you. We've all done that. It feels so good and religious and warm to be like, I'll pray for you, brother. Come on. No, you won't. Don't lie. You, you won't pray for me. You haven't been praying for me. So just don't lie. If you Now, if you are then do it and tell them you're doing it. Let your family know. Let your mom know, mom, I'm praying for you. Let your dad know, dad, I know you're far from God. I know you're hurting, but I'm praying for you. Let your cousin, your coworker, your aunt, your uncle, your colleague, let them know that I'm praying for you. Philippians 1, chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident. Oh man, I love this. Woo. Being confident in this of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Being confident in this very thing. Paul, what very thing are you so confident in? That he, capital H, that's Jesus, who started a good work in you. I'm talking right at you. Look, I'm pointing at the camera. Started a good work in you, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let me say this. Every single one of you, and this is good news. Do not get off this broadcast tonight. You need to hear this. Every single one of us are under construction. None of us are, have arrived. I know you might think that's not true about me, but let me just show you this. None of us have arrived. None of us are perfect. God is always working on us. And we need to have confidence that God is going to finish the work. Now, some of you are like, praise the Lord. I knew God wasn't done with my husband. I knew God wasn't done with my wife. Praise the Lord. And you look at your husband or wife and you go, man, they're under construction. God's working on them. Praise the Lord. But you know what God says? I'm not just working on your husband or your wife that's impatient and bitter or whatever. I'm working on you. There's 2,500 people in here. Praise the Lord. Every single one of you that are on the replay, that are watching live, God says, you are under construction. I am working on you. So as long as you're in this earthly realm, God is working on you. This is why I don't miss altar calls. I respond to every single altar call. Make fun of me. Get in line. Everyone does. I don't care because I know God's working and I want to make sure I'm in the right place for God to work. Before I go live, maybe you don't know this. I ask God before I go live every single time. For the last three years, I've been live how many times? H hundreds of times? 100, 300, about 300 live streams I've done. I Before I hit live, I go, Lord, do it in me. Every single time I pray, Lord, do it in me. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be religious. I don't want to be preaching to them. Oh, this is you guys. You're lukewarm and dead. Lord, do it in me. Wake me up. Change me. Deliver me. Heal me. Restore me. I'm open, God. Point out anything in my life that offends you, that, that doesn't line up with your word. Because I'm a work in progress. I'm under construction. So God is still working. I want him to do it in my life. I'm not arrogant. I don't think I have it all together. I'm always working. God's always changing me. My life is a construction site that God is always working in. I, I live my life on the potter's will. God's always like breaking this, molding this, refining and purifying this. When does the work finish? When do I get to come off the potter's wheel and be done with it all and be, and be good to go? I'm sparkly and perfect. Here's when. When I stand face to face with Jesus after, after temporary death in this realm and then going to... Or when I meet Jesus in the air. Two conditions to being made perfect. 
meeting Jesus in the air or dying and standing before him on judgment day. Nobody is fine where they're at if they're still in this realm. You are not okay. I'm blown away by when we do altar calls, people sit back like this. I'm like, if you need more of God, come forward. If you need revival, come forward. If you need deliverance, come forward. Here, here's what you're saying to God. I'm good where I'm at. I don't need more. That's called being lukewarm. You're in need of nothing. You go, I want more money, more this, more that. But when it comes to God, uh, I'm good where I'm at. No, you're not. Nobody's good where they're at. Not one of you. I'm blown away by how many people don't want prayer or respond to altar calls. You're saying you're fine where you're at. And Paul stresses this. God is working on you. Nothing is by accident. God is working. So whatever you're going through in life, God is working. God is always working behind the scenes. You just need to zoom out your perspective. If you watch a movie, which I don't really enjoy movies, I just get bored too easy, okay? If you watch a movie, you know that if you zoomed out the camera, there's 50 people behind the scenes doing whatever needs to be done to make that movie film. You know it's not real. You know there's 50 people behind the scenes. When you zoom out and you're not so narrow focused on what you're going through, like I'm going through the sickness and that's all I could think about. When you zoom out, you realize that God is always working. Even if you don't feel it, he's working. Even if you don't think so, I'm gonna start singing now, okay, Waymaker. Even if you don't see it, feel it, believe it, God is working on your behalf behind the scenes. God is always working. So this shows me, this verse shows me I'm not in charge of my spiritual life. God, my spiritual growth not life, okay, I messed up there, growth, God is. My job is to stay connected to the vine and fruit will automatically grow. Have you ever driven by a fruit tree and the fruit tree's like, oh, I need to produce an orange. Have you ever seen a fruit tree be like, I really need to produce an orange and a lemon and it's shivering going like, it's trying. Fruit trees don't try to produce. They produce because they're connected. The branch isn't like, oh, I really got to produce an orange today. I got to work for this. The branch produces fruit because it's connected to the vine. And Jesus says, I know if your fruit's good or not based on who you're connected to. They don't have to try to be connected. They're connected, I'm, I'm sorry, they don't have to try to produce fruit. They produce fruit because they're connected. If you're struggling to produce fruit, maybe you're not connected. Okay, let's move on.